Residence. I think I'm just going to take up residence at the old Angler Inn here in Potomac, Maryland, where the food is good and the service is even better. Well, actually, the food is great and the service is better. Hey, folks, welcome back to Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. And as always, put your hands together for my esteemed co-host, Mr. Self-Empowerment, Wilbur Skipper. Hey, look here, it's been a great day here at Old Angler Inn, and we're just going to keep this thing rolling. Uh, we're going to really enjoy this next segment as we kind of go into the rolling grimes, not just sports and entertainment, but the entertainment portion of not just sports and entertainment as we welcome Mr. Marvin Brown from the Soft Tones. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. <laughs> For those who do not know, we're going to tell you quickly because... We had him on before, after one of the shows, but we're going to get into his life a little bit deeper. Right now, it was your birthday. Happy belated uh, birthday to you. Happy belated birthday. Many more to come right. to you. Thank you. Super. Thank so you. September 29th is what I call an official Marvin Brown birthday. Yes, sir. So we're going to party for no damn reason. <laughs> <laughs> Every September 29th. So here's the deal. What are the soft tones? Um, the soft tones, we're a vocal group. Uh, started out uh, in high school together, uh, grew up together in the same neighborhood, uh, and we loved to sing from an early age, from our early teens. Um, so the Soft Tones, we're a rhythm and blues group. Uh, we sing a lot of different types of things, like they mix it up a little bit, but mainly it's R&B. Okay, so now, for those who haven't heard some of the music, you can go on our website and of course you can connect with some other ways but on our website we have some clips and you can connect with them singing live on stage and i'm telling you now get ready because the brothers can blow having said that real quick before skip jumps and marvin you've been in this business for a minute okay now i personally have been on the fringes of it and i hear all kinds of horror stories all kinds of war stories mm -hmm. when i think about the business or when you think about the business of the music industry. Tell me and tell us a little bit about what you've learned from it and how it has helped to change your life and shape your life. Both positively and maybe some of the yeah, some of the difficulties along the way. I don't want anyone to get the impression that it's one hundred percent party time. Well it's definitely not one hundred percent party time. Um, when we were younger, I think our, our whole thing was about uh, being popular and that sort of thing. Uh, but we didn't, and we didn't look at the music business as a business. So we, you know, we made records. We knew nothing about things like publishing. You know, we knew you got royalty off record, royalties off of records, and that sort of thing. But not uh, a million other things that could go on with music. Um, and even today, we don't own all of our music. It, it, it belongs and what does to, that mean, you don't own all of your music? We don't have any real rights beyond being able to perform it live. And, uh, uh, and also, we receive artist royalties, very minimal, uh, uh, for the music. But we couldn't place it in a movie if we mm. wanted. We couldn't reorganize uh, the music and put out our own Greatest Hits album. We can suggest it to the companies that have the rights to it, but we don't and cannot do it ourselves. Now can you redo those records over again, put a new name, new spin, or 
or are you limited in what you can do? You can so redo them, and yeah. um, but you still, we would still, for instance, I wrote several of the songs that became, you know, relatively big hits for us, but I still <laughs> won't own the the total exclusive rights to that. I can own rights to a version of it, it being a new one, but of course people will want their original stuff because that's what people will rebuy yeah. and, and that sort of thing. So no, I could. We, we did re-record one song we did a long time ago, but in my opinion, it's, it's not the same as the actual original record. It, I think the original was better at first. Oh, well, tell us about two or three of these songs that you wrote that were original hits, so to speak, for your group. Um, one song that I wrote uh, was called My Dream, and that was really one of our big first national breakout hits, um, and uh, that's one we don't own the rights to. Um, another song, uh, we did a song, we had gone to Japan and we'd been over there several times. We were there our third time, third tour, and the Japanese market wanted a new song uh, and they had planned on and did record a live album on the soft tones. So I wrote a song called You Go Your Way and I'll Go Mine. Uh, again, you know, I'm so floored by, you know, the fact that we're going to Japan and, you know, we make pretty good money and, you know, that whole thing. Never thought about copyrights and, and some of the other things you need to think about. So uh, that's another song that came out, did very well in the marketplace. We actually perform it on the show uh, uh, when the Soft Tones perform. Um, and then um, we have the song Call of My Love uh, that I wrote, uh, that was in 1978. And I don't own the rights to that, uh, even though the rights are going to be coming up because some publishing becomes public domain if it is exactly. not re-grabbed, so I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. All right, so folks, don't re-grab it if you do, Bubba's coming again. There you go, that's right. <laughs> Skip. Well, now Marvin, Roland and I had the privilege and the honor two weeks ago to actually see you guys perform live. You guys were so empowering. Where does that come from with the soft tones? And folks, if you miss it, like Roland said, you can go to our website, www.rollingroundshow.com. You can see it for yourself. I mean, you guys, it, as I was watching it, it, it made me go back to Pikesville. It moves you. I, I mean, it I was moves. there. I was there. And, and I, I went through this experience because Roland and I was there along with our photographer. We were there. Where does that empowering part come from? Collectively as a group. Collectively, I think that over the years, because we've changed so much as ind individually and as people and, you know, what we believe in and, and that sort of thing, um, that we, one, I, I know for a fact we enjoy doing it more. Mm -hmm. It's more meaningful for oh, us now. We actually love the music. Um, we're not even standing up there to get all of this perfection as much as we're just doing it. So you have the new honeymoon. It. Exactly. It's like and a, it's, a, a new passion? Yes, absolutely. And, and I think that, that because of things that we've learned along the way, both spiritually and, and on other levels, it, it just, uh, for us, we're so excited because it's a privilege to do it. And that's, that's kind of what you may um, see uh, 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 as the empowering thing because it's sort of like, we don't have to be gifted this way. We don't have to have had this opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, we're, we're, we're all, you know, up in age and to just the turnouts and people knowing your music and all that was just, it's just really a great thing. Well, you guys had a great turnout. Your management team did a phenomenal job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. have a great management oh, team too, uh, as, as well as you all. Now, from the standpoint of the empowering part, you talked about that. Now. It seems to me, and please tell me if I'm wrong, that each one of you all, the three of you all in the group, you guys are not only determined, but you do it so well in terms of staying in your lane. And collectively, you come together, and it was just, uh, I enjoyed it so much that I, I wanted to tell Roland that I was done working for the day. <laughs> but of course, we had to do the interviews after the show. I wanted to tell Roland and tell Fred, listen, or call my wife, come get me. I'm ready to leave because if I stay, Roland's going to make me work, and I want to just enjoy the show. <laughs> uh, but I want to commend you on that. I mean, you guys Thank did a phenomenal job. I'm an old school guy. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank Roland is an old school p funk guy. Uh, but he can get down with what you guys do and collectively. Uh, we really appreciate it. You know, and the thing that. about it is, as I listen to the singing, the harmonies, the melody, uh, those things are timeless. So I don't necessarily even have to be old school because, I mean, D'Angelo, 
the Nicki Minaj, or Lady Gaga, I mean, a whole bunch of other artists, uh, Christina Aguilera, I mean, she can blow. I mean, these folks are putting out you know, music that has some you know, very similar, I want to say R&B slant, I really don't want to put the label category on it for my purposes, mm -hmm. but the, they're singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and they're putting music out there that's somewhat meaningful, mm -hmm. uh, moves people, and uh, and I enjoy it, and I actually kind of want to fall in love all over again sometimes when I listen to it. So as you look at your crowds and as you listen to, listen to people respond to you, are you getting similar feedback from folks? Is it just hey, here comes the old old school group, or are you old school folks following me around, or do you kind of see a, a blend of different types of people? When it, we, we see a blend, and one of the other things that uh, we work very, very hard at is blending newer and our music. So, uh, for instance, in our show, you'll see that we put Jill Scott in there. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. We put Raheem Devon in there. We have Chrisette Michelle in our show. And as you come to see the soft tones, we'll blend those songs in and weave them into our older songs. Because we, we, I agree with you. I mean, you have some people who are just phenomenal talents today, and uh, who are really doing it well. Who are really, uh, 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 you can see they did their homework right. with the music, and that right. the, the music has a bunch of elements in it, and they think about it. At least that's what I hear when I listen to some of these people. Uh, I think that the music has begun to evolve in a sense that's going. And I hate to say back, but it's evolved to a point now that we sort of have all of this mixture of the new stuff, the hip hop, and some yeah. of the things, and the elements of that stuff are fabulous. And you've got people singing again, sure, you know, absolutely. and really the D'Angelo's and uh, just folks nice like world. that. And, and and what I like is they're they're singing against. It, it, we were talking about it, Steve and Elvin and I were talking about it. Uh, it's almost elements of sort of jazz, if you will, yeah. that they put into the R&B, and it's it's something else. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Definitely. No question about it. Well, one of the things that I, I want to say as well, and it may sound like folks that I'm giving them shout-outs, and I am, because I really enjoyed the show uh, that you guys uh, performed two weeks ago in, in Baltimore. For me, as a fan, as a music fan, the reason why I said old school is because one of the things that I can appreciate about old school is that they were singing. Mm -hmm. They didn't have all these drum machines and all this other stuff that makes people sound good in the studio. And then when you go out to buy a ticket, you say, well, I don't want to go see them anymore. Mm -hmm. The soft tones to me, and this is just my own opinion, you guys were worth more than the ticket price that people paid. I don't know what it was, but you all were worth more. Again, I have to go back to the footage that we were able to grab. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to you guys. I felt like I was there. So there was two things that hit me. First, the empowerment, that was there. And then the second thing was the, you, you guys were so authentic. Thank you. I mean, that's that's priceless. I don't know that you could put a price on that. I know, I know, Roland, I'm a little out of my, well, yeah, I mean, normally I'm a little more calmer about yeah, but this, but I'm excited, so well, I, don't don't I, mind me. This side of your phone is uncut. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not mad at you, man. You can get loose, but let's try to look. Can, I, can I lose my time? Let me lose my time. Check, <laughs> we really get ready there. I'm going back. Man, look, your check is in the mail. Oh, it doesn't matter goodness. how you say it, man. I was uh, impressed myself. So, so having said that, look, this pricelessness, the authenticity, the enjoyment of the product that you put out there. Obviously, there's some work behind the scenes that we don't get to see. Tell us about the work. Uh, the, it's a lot of uh, rehearsal time. Uh, and it's interesting because when you were talking about even the Mickey, Nicki Minaj's and people like that, one thing that popped in my head was how much thought goes into the designing of a show uh, or a record or whatever you're doing. The show and we're doing here, man. The show. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, and uh, I go back and forth. Sometimes my manager will, we just play musical uh, set lineups and, mm -hmm. and the whole thing, and, and I have to give it to her. She comes up with extremely good sets, so mm -hmm. we end up going with her idea. Mm -hmm. Not a plug, very true, right? <laughs> um, but the other thing is, and, and we, we've been privileged to, to work with some excellent musicians and they allow me to hum stuff to them, the horn players, and I'll say, do this, but they just do it the way it should be done. 
Um, but it's it is a lot of work, um, and we're 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 working because we we're hoping that we're doing this because we want this to to impact you. Mm -hmm. We hope it's a positive mm -hmm. impact, and um, and we've been very fortunate in that, that 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 works. But it takes hours, days, lots of planning, all the way down the wardrobe and all. And in between all that, you have a day job. Yes. Yes. Just to, Tell us about it as we close. Um, I'm Dr. Marvin Brown. I hold a PhD in psychology. Uh, Let's give him a hand. So, so, so when we say Dr. Falkenstein, we really mean it. Right? It's, not, it's, not just, it's not just a monitor. It's just, it's Dr. Falkenstein. But uh, and I work with um, the people who have drug and alcohol addiction problems and also mental illness. Um, I've been doing that uh, for 25 years mm -hmm. now. I uh, started in about 1987. Um, so that's what I do during the day. And I run uh, several clinics now uh, for the organization I work with. Uh, and I love it. I, I, it's funny because when I stopped doing music full time, I prayed, that, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, and uh, this kind of came up and sort of fit the bill to be able to work with people and do some other things. I enjoy it. Uh, it doesn't even feel like work. I mean, sometimes I just feel like I'm synced with the music. Yeah. It's like you're stealing. <laughs> Look, okay, you so you're doing it, and they pay you for it. So. Wow. So here we go. Now I have to have you back on the show again, Mom. Okay. Because you just open up a whole nother can of worms with this Dr. Marvin Brown. Okay. Thing. So one thing about the Rolling Brown show, it's good to tell you, so people in the audience is that we want to cover the gamut of the human experience. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about being involved with social sciences in a very, very powerful way. And now we're talking about Dr. Marvin Brown. So ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor as we say farewell for now to one of the original members of the Soft Tones on behalf of Mr. Wilbur Skipper, Fred, One Shot Fred, cameraman, everybody involved, Cooney on the time key, Everyone involved with the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. My good friend Lenny is helping me put some of this stuff together, man. God bless you. Folks, we're going to say goodbye for now to Dr. Marvin Brown of the Song of Tones.